If you're new to gardening, you might feel confused because you don't know what to plant and when to plant it in your garden. If you're a more advanced gardener, you might know when to plant, but maybe you don't always take action to make it happen, or you don't continue planting so that you get the most food possible from your garden. In this video, we're gonna talk about a few things you can do to make sure you're harvesting a lot of food from your garden throughout the entire season. Over the years of working with thousands of gardeners, one of the things I've learned is that most people wait way too long in spring to start planting. If you waltz out to your garden right around your last spring frost and then plant your entire garden, you're doing it wrong. And you're missing out on one of the best times of the gardening season, the early spring. So the first step that you can take is to make sure you're planting as early as possible in your garden. There are plenty of vegetables that can be planted before your average last frost. In fact, many of these vegetables prefer the cooler temperatures of the spring and will actually perform a lot better. If you've ever had trouble with your spinach or cilantro bolting, it could be because you're planting too late. Where I live in Madison, Wisconsin, zone 5A, my average last frost is around mid-May. So that means about four weeks before that average last frost, which is mid-April, I head out to my garden and I start planting the early cool season crops like kale, broccoli, carrots, beets, lettuce, radishes, and much more. These vegetables are frost hardy, which means they don't mind if the nighttime temperatures get near freezing. They should be fine. Planting earlier than you're used to means that you're going to get harvests a lot earlier than you're used to. This is a great way to get more food from your garden in spring and early summer, which is right when we're starved for fresh homegrown produce. And this is just the beginning. Step two is to continue planting. You're going to start planting four weeks before your average last frost, and then you're going to continue to plant all the way up to your average last frost and beyond two weeks after, four weeks after, six weeks after, sometimes, depending on where you live, eight weeks after your last frost. In fact, in my garden, I continue to plant all the way up until the beginning of September. If you're a more advanced gardener, you may have heard of the term succession planting. This means planting the same vegetable several times throughout the season for a more continued harvest. So for example, instead of just going out in April and planting a whole bed of beets, that means probably in about 65 days, you're gonna have way more beets than you could possibly eat. Instead, you go out in April and you plant one row of beets. Then you come back two weeks later and you plant another row of beets. And then maybe you take a break for a few weeks and then you come back after your last frost and you plant another row. And you can continue to plant a different row of beets, however many times you like, until six to eight weeks after your average last frost. This means that you'll be harvesting beets likely all the way into the fall past your first frost. I usually harvest the last of my beets sometime before Thanksgiving. So instead of planting and harvesting all your beets at once, you're using staggered plantings, which is called succession plantings, to have a more continued harvest of one of your favorite vegetables. Some of the other vegetables that are great for succession planting are carrots, radishes, salad mix, and cilantro. So whether you're a new gardener or someone who's had their hands in the soil for many years now, knowing what to plant, when to plant it, and staying on track will help you get more food from your garden for many more months of the season. So what's the best way to figure this all out? It's to create your own personal spring planting schedule. Luckily, you don't have to figure it all out on your own because I've created a calendar template that you can fill in for your exact garden. All you have to do is calculate your average last frost date and plug different dates into the calendar. It will tell you what to plant each week of the season and even help you with succession plantings. You can download the calendar and the directions and print them out and get started right away on planning to have more food from your garden than you ever have before. This season, I'd love to support you in getting organized 
staying on track, and not missing opportunities in the garden. No matter how many years you've been gardening, two, 20, or 40, the Flavorful Life Garden Club can help you save time, simplify the process of gardening, and get more out of the precious time you do spend in your garden. Registration is open right now, so visit the link below this video to check out all the details.